So we also have some pretty darn amazing speakers who are ready, uh, standing by to talk to you right now. Uh, let me give them a little intro. The first of our two speakers is a longtime friend of mine. He actually was the co-host uh, with me on Hashtag Black Love. I don't know if anyone had a chance to watch that TV series that we did, a spinoff of Married at First Sight. But man, he is amazing. He's also a psychotherapist and the founder of the Good Men Club. He's been on... Um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. You were fabulous on that, by the way, my friend. He's been on Married to Medicine, Divorce Court, BBC, Fox News, Nightline, Lifetime, CBS. I could go on and on, but please just help me welcome my dear friend, Jack A. Daniels. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I don't know if people are clapping or not, but they, it sounds <laughs> like it in my head. It's hard to hear it <laughs> in the webinar format, but... Um, I'm clapping for you, certainly. I'm and clapping for you. You famous. I love it. I love <laughs> it. <laughs> I love it. You like awesome. Got the whole book trailer. I I just happy to know you. I'm happy to know you too, and I'm happy you're here. And I'm <laughs> also happy to introduce our other panelists for this session, Talia Goldstein. Now, Talia is also a very big deal, y'all. I'm sure you've heard of Three Day Rule. They are a they're one of the biggest matchmaking comp companies in the country. She is the founder, y'all, of Three Day Rule. She's been featured on tons of of news outlets from Good Morning America to CNN, and she's found matches for hundreds of clients, a lot of celebrity clients as well, executives, entrepreneurs, celebrities. For years, we've shared clients, we've shared stories, we've shared advice. Please welcome in Talia Goldstein. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations. That trailer was amazing. Thank you. And also, I love your pink top is amazing. And that's it beautiful. The book. <laughs> well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll use your, your pink top to sort of cue us into our next myth. And for those who are just joining, the book is broken into the four myths, the four biggest myths that I see as a dating and relationship coach that help that stop people from being able to find their forever person and really be satisfied in the relationships that they're in. I do give four pillars as well, and we'll be talking about the pillars in later sessions. But uh, one of the myths that I think honestly is the most prevalent is the chemistry myth. And I feel like there's so much that factors into chemistry. It could be the color that you're wearing. It could mm -hmm. be what happened before, what you're bringing into the day. It could just be like, they remind you of something. Do you like their haircut? You you know, there, there's so many things that create chemistry, the location that you're in. And I feel like I get the most questions about chemistry. Um, but I want to know from your perspectives, having set up dates, having counseled people through dates, um, what is what is chemistry really, Talia? What are people actually when they tell you, oh, I didn't feel the chemistry when you set up a match? What are they actually talking about? Yeah, I think it's they're what they're saying is a feeling that they have. They want to feel fireworks and the butterflies and the excitement like chemically in their body. And what typically happens is the when you do feel that, it's a negative sign. And actually, what you should feel is none of that. And you should feel a sense of home. You should feel comfort, like you're 100% yourself. So it's a really confusing thing because people don't understand that butterflies are typically a negative. Oh, yes. Um, I agree with you. Butterflies are typically a negative. I actually say in F the Fairy Tale, I, I drew a lot from interviews that I've had with guests on my podcast, Dates and Mates. I had Dr. Drew Pinsky on our 400th episode, and he said something interesting. He said, we want butterflies and not lightning bolts. Um, what do you think about that, Jack? Do you think, are you like butterflies, thumbs up, butterflies down, lightning bolts, what do you think all of those feelings in our body mean? I equate it to, that's interesting that you say that. I could, because I, when, when you say that, I, I think more about like uh, a lighter. If you think of a lighter, when you're, when you're in this flickering, if you're trying to get the, to actually spark and, and have that fire, I equate some of the butterflies to the spark. 
And what most people need to be doing is looking for the flame and for the fire. But most people love that that spark. They love that. So when you say lightning bolt, uh, I think of a spark. And <clears throat> unfortunately, what most of us are going around doing is looking for those little tidbits of things that just give us a spark and they don't last for a lifetime. And I think those are the stories that we tell ourselves that are important to us. Like, well, I need them to look like this. I need her to, uh, to have these features. And those are the things that keep us in that spark phase, but not in the fire phase. Mm, I I love your analogies. I love the way that you paint the pictures and, and walk people through this experience. And, you know, I agree that like you have to feel something, but I find that a lot of times we put so much pressure on that first interaction, that first date, that first impression. And for me, and for most of my clients, chemistry really develops. <clears throat> it develops over time. Um, do you think, Talia, that like, when do you expect your clients to feel chemistry? Because like as a matchmaker, I'm sure you're setting up a lot of people with dates that you know from what they've told you and what you've you found out about the person you know that there's something deeper than just the first physical attraction. <laughs> when do you expect your clients to feel the chemistry though? Yes. So we set our clients up and by the time they go on the date, we already know, you know, the core values align and you know what their non-negotiables align. So really the last part is whether the connection is there. After the date, we get post-date feedback from both parties. And I find that feedback to be incredibly interesting and helpful. Typically what happens, especially for women is they come back and they say, he was really kind and interesting, but I didn't feel that spark and they're ready to give up. And what we say is if you found them kind and remotely attractive, it's so important to go out again because you'll see a different side to them and chemistry typically can grow. So when I analyze success stories, hundreds of success stories that we've, you know, ultimately ended up in engagement. Usually the women are cautiously optimistic. Like they're not sure on that first date or even the second. And it's really that third, fourth or fifth where all of a sudden it clicks and the chemistry is there. So it's a slow burn and it typically doesn't happen right away. A hundred percent agree with you. I talk in F the fairy tale about, I have a three date rule. I say, if you're curious enough about them after the first date, give it a second date. If you're curious enough to spend another hour with them, go on the third date. I usually find that if by the third date, you're not like, hmm, what would it be like? You know, <laughs> what, 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 could, what could I do with this person? Then usually that's um, probably not the the relationship for you. Maybe that's more of a friend or another connect, kind of connection. But um one question I get all the time on dates and mates, I got to ask you as, as the man on this panel, Jack A. Daniels, um, I got to ask you the sex question, sex on the first date. Yes or no. Why would you ask me that? Like, 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 <laughs> like, like what? are you kidding? Like, okay. Because, so. because yeah. I, I, because I'll, I'll tell you why I ask you that. Okay. Cause I so. feel like, um, a lot of my female listeners will say, well, men just want to sleep with anything that walks. And then there's some people that say, well, if you sleep with them, then they're not going to want a relationship. But you've been doing this a long time. You've talked to a lot of good men and okay. a lot of good women. What is so. the real deal? I've seen it both ways and there is no, there's no good. There's no bad. There's no ugly. There's no right, no wrong. What I've seen is when people are in alignment, people have an attraction, they have their, their core values. They have a lot of the things that they have compatibility on the chemistry actually forms. Sex is sometimes often for a man just release. Now it's not to say that we don't value it. We don't, we don't emotionally bond with it. We do. But some men are out looking simply for a lustful thing. And if you're on a date and it happens to happen, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's not going to be any long-term commitment. Uh, what it means is, hey, we were compatible in this area of our life. But what needs to happen is we got to figure out if we're compatible in all of these other areas. Because sex is easy. Sex is like, you know, if, 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 if we drive, if we, if we're in alignment there, great. 
What about emotionally? What about spiritually? What about financially? What about um, all of the other things that are going to help us stay together for the duration of time? I've seen it both ways. I've seen couples who have had sex on the first mm -hmm. date and they have been married for 20 years. I've seen couples that have first sex on the first date. That was it. 20 minutes. That's it. Like, I, I'm not calling you anymore. I'm on to the next. So I don't think it I, I don't think sex is the the undisputed answer for a relationship to last. I really think it depends on the people and the alignment of the people as to whether or not they're going to be compatible uh, for the long haul. So, yeah, I mean, do men want it? Absolutely. You know, give it to us. Absolutely. Not all men. I think men who are out looking for that. They, they're going to seek it. But those that value themselves, they value the idea of relationships, of family, of uh, legacy. They're going to be looking for something more than just a quick fix and 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 uh, somebody to lay in the bed with. They, they want somebody that's going to be there for the long haul. Yeah, it's a complicated question. I have to say, uh, and I'm I'm actually going to be addressing a question like this on um, I'm taping a few episodes of the Drew Barrymore show next week. And I had this debate with my producer <clears throat> because I said in the 17 years that I've been coaching, the reality is you you're grown up, you do whatever you want. The reality is with all of my clients, anyone who had sex on the first date is mm -hmm. not actually still with that person. Really? That's that's just in my practice. Now I've heard yeah. stories of other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh so I know it happens and I'm not saying it can happen. I'm just like, you know, I and I do this with OK Cupid data. I do this, you know, on dates and mates when I'm looking at stats and stories. Yeah. I'm just I just give you the stats. So, you know, I offer that up. I don't know Tali if they're giving you <laughs> in your <laughs> post date uh assessment if they're giving you all of the details, the juicy details. Yeah, there's no TMI in matchmaking. We get a lot of the details, um, but typically you need time to form the connection, at least on the woman's side. And so we don't believe there are any rules. Like you can do whatever you want. We're not going to set strict rules, but typically waiting at least a handful of dates will lead to more success than the first date. 100%. Okay. I'm going to get involvement from everybody listening, watching right now. Um, if you all have a question, we're going to move into some Q&A. Put your question in the Q&A box down below, but I'm going to get everyone involved because I'm going to launch a poll. I want to know about your, your favorite places to find dates. We have Talia here, who's a matchmaker. Jack, you've done some matchmaking events. You're a coach, you're a psychotherapist. Um, I know we we together have coached people on various ways to make connections, but I'm just, uh, I want to get a, a temperature read from the audience here. Uh, what's your favorite place to find dates? Um, and I, I, I listed online dating apps. It should just pop up in your Zoom, everybody. Online dating apps, social media, or other online sources through friends, in person, out and about, professional matchmaking or singles events or another option. Um, and another option better be like, None of the above. Okay. It better not be that. Um, so I'm going to go into some Q and a while folks are filling out that poll. Um, we've only got about 40% participation. So take a minute, just let me know what's your favorite. What's your favorite. Um, it's interesting. I'm watching the results come in. We'll come back to that in a second, but I want to answer <sighs> Jack, you, you are the founder of, of, the Good Men Club, you're going to give everybody access to your free training. Where are all the good men after this forum? Yeah. There's a question here from an anonymous attendee who says, with post-COVID dating, there are so many red flags in men. How do you stay positive? That's so many red flags. Wow, that's a, that's a loaded question. I, uh, I, but I know you hear this because you named it Good I, Men. I, I think... Uh, I, I think Men are getting a bad rap is, is what I'll say. There are a lot of great guys out here that are saying, hey, I'm single, successful, I'm ready to be married, but I can't seem to find quality women. And believe it or not, there are a lot of guys who have their stuff together that they, you know, they, they have their morals, they have, you know, they're reliable, they're responsible, they're kind, they're considerate, they have integrity, 
uh, honest, great character. And they just have, they're having a hard time finding quality women. So what we've done is we started collecting them and we've been collecting them for a, a number of years. So we have like this huge database of great guys who are saying, you know, I'm, I just want a quality woman who gets me, who understands me and who is not out to use me, who is not out to take advantage of or to get a free meal or get a bag or something. To that effect, like a woman who's genuinely interested in family, uh, in in building legacy, partnership. And I think that the good guys are getting overshadowed by the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And most women, unfortunately, gravitate towards the red flags that attract them to some of the bad guys. Stemming, stemming from back in childhood, you know, whether you, you were going for the for the bad boy and you still want that man. You want the bravado, the machismo and the the roughness and the adventure. You want that. You love that. Uh, but the good guys, you know, he gets up, he goes to work, comes back home. He may be a little boring. He may not have as much adventure, but he's solid. He's stable. And some women don't really have the capacity to. Uh, be exposed to what stability looks like because their life has been so up and down and and uh, whatever trauma that they've had and it's seen from the exposure and experiences from their past, their parents, um, the past, the partners that they've been with. So I think that the good guys are getting a really bad rap. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are more of them than uh, a lot of people believe. And that's why we started collecting them and trying to connect them to as many women as we possibly could. Yeah, I agree with you. I actually talk in the book about how I had a dating plan for myself and I called it Operation Date Nice Guys. Like we had a code word at the office. We but why like, they got to be nice guys? Like, like thinking like nice guys. Do that. Well, and that was my nice definition, guys. right? Like, and I know yeah. like nice guys has now taken on another connotation. This was 20 years ago. That was my definition okay. because okay. someone reflected to me, my boss at the time was like, I don't like how these guys that you're dating are treating you. I was going out all the time, but I wasn't meeting yeah. people who were really aligned with me in my long-term goals. So I had to create like a plan around it for myself because my attractions were to what you were just saying. I'm like, oh, if you got, if you got tattoos and you, <laughs> and you, your father left you and like you, you have dreams to be a rock star, but you haven't really, you've never made an album. Like, let me fix you, honey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it never worked. I never fixed anybody. But then when I met my husband, it was a totally <laughs> different thing. Talia, as a matchmaker, you work with both men and women, right? So you right. have people coming to you with their hopes and dreams for a partner and I'm curious what your reaction is to that and and how, you know, even maybe reframing some of the language that we use when we are sort of ordering up our partner from the great the great buff dating buffet in the sky. Yeah, I love everything you said, because usually those good guys, the consistent guys win in the end. Um, but we are attracted to like the charismatic, charming types that, you know, are not always the best guys. So like those stable guys end up being the best long-term partners. So as matchmakers, we just help our clients reorganize their list and figure out what are the qualities that are really going to make a difference in 20 years and thinking long-term versus short-term, the lists are quite different. So you ultimately want someone who's supportive and loyal. And if you want kids will be a great father. Like that's what really you should be looking for in a partner. And so if you're dating, it often happens where people are dating multiple people at the same time. And they're so excited about the one that has a lot of chemistry and the stable, nice guys sort of in the background. But ultimately that guy will win in the end because he will call when he says he will, he will follow through, he will be thoughtful. And so usually that is who they end up marrying. Yes, a hundred percent. I've lived it. I've seen it with so many clients over the years. I'm going to share the results of our poll. Uh, turns out, out and about, uh, in person out and about is our big winner with 46%. Uh, dating apps tied with through friends. Um, and then there, 
I, I want to know what the other option is. <laughs> uh, professional matchmaking is at 5% and social media is at 2%. I was wondering if anyone was going to put in social media. So there were a couple people that, um, like when I say online dating, really online dating is the whole landscape of how you can meet someone. But um, it's funny, Shauna here in the chat said that um, in the, in the Q and A said, can't say that any options for meeting people are my favorite and apps are just part of the process. I think all of these options are good options. And I agree with that. Like, I think we have to be open to using all the tools available to us. And sometimes we, we put a lot of, um, pressure on one, whether it's a dating app or our matchmaker or our friends, we put a lot of pressure on one. And it's interesting that I, I'm just going to kind of ring the bell here for what I'm seeing, because a lot of people will say, well, my favorite way is to meet in person out and about, but I'm just going to ask you all that put that in what you're actively doing to make that happen. And ha has that actually man manifested dates for you? Let's say in the last six months. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to do any coaching. I'm going to tell you, you can buy the book and you can get some coaching in here around that. But if that is your choice and you say that is your preferred method, it does require a different level of presence and activity and showing up. So um, I just ask you if that if you chose that, how you are making that your most, not just favorite, but your most viable way of meeting matches. So um, so yes, uh, the link is actually, uh, yeah, F the fairy tale book or uh, Demona Hoffman.com slash F the fairy tale if you haven't gotten your book yet. And if you want to enter the giveaway, which I talked about earlier, uh, the giveaway is Demona Hoffman.com slash giveaway. We, um, oh my gosh, it's already at the top of the hour. We're already getting our new panelists. I wanted to ask more questions. Uh, I want to ask more questions. Um, okay, last question, really quick. Um, how do I get one of these nice guys? Jack, <laughs> anonymous <laughs> attendee asks, how do I get one of these nice guys? <laughs> uh, go to where the men at dot com. <laughs> you can where the men at dot com. You uh, can also just go to the replay page, which we will email out to you tomorrow. And we have we have gifts from all of our panelists. So yes, you can get Jack's free training. Where are all the good men? The truth yeah. about how to meet the quality men you deserve. Also. Talia, we just scratched the surface talking about matchmaking, but I I just want to give you a sec to, to let people know how that differs from what I do as a, as a dating coach and what, what people might have seen on TV. <laughs> what is matchmaking today? Yeah. Well, first of all, anyone can sign up for free to be in the network and be eligible to be matched with clients. But matchmaking, basically you work one-on-one -on -one with a matchmaker. We get to know you and what you're looking for. And then it's like outsourcing your dating life where we're going through all the interviews of your potential matches. And we're just sending you the ones that are really worth your time and meet what you're looking for. And three-day rule is national, international? We're national. National. Yes. Okay. All right. So those of you, we did a poll earlier where everybody was at. Those of you in Australia and and in Europe, uh, come across the pond and Talia can find you some matches. Um, and I actually have a collaboration with Three Day Rule. So if you go to threedayrule.com slash Damona Hoffman, my full name, that will take you to the page where you can you can fill out an application there, right, Talia? Exactly, yes. Fill out an application. That link will also be on the replay page. Thank you so much for being here, yeah. both of you. It's so good to see your beautiful faces, to be reunited with you. I've known both of these people for so long and you're doing some amazing love work in the world. So thank you for being here with me. Thank you. I can't wait to give all my clients your book. Congratulations. I know that's right. Congratulations. Best hey, thank you. Thank you so much.